So my whole job, what I work on with clients, what I'm going to talk about tonight is, okay, how do you make the 7%, the words that you say, as memorable as possible? And then how do you organize your voice and your body so that nothing about them detracts from what you're trying to accomplish? So the 7%, the words that you say. Yale University did a study of the 12 most persuasive words in the English language. What they discovered is that the most persuasive word in the English language is you. So the more that you can, as you're talking to people, be like, as I'm sure you know, and as I'm sure you've heard, and when I was thinking about talking to you today, and it's you, and it's you, and, and it makes sense. Because, you know, we're all the hero or heroine of our own life. We're moving through the day, and when someone acknowledges that, oh, they're as interested in me as I am, we find them fascinating. So it's really beginning to drop you into your conversation as much as you possibly can. Another statistic that's helpful to have comes from a social psychologist in California. Her name is Ellen Langer. And she did a study that discovered that there's one word in the English language that increases the possibility of cooperation from 60 to 94 percent. Are there any guesses about what that might be? Any guesses at all? No. Mm. It's actually because. I wanted to talk to you today because, and again, we're so clear on the because behind why we want something done or why we're asking somebody to do something or whatever it might be that we forget to articulate that for other people. But until you do that, you know, they don't care. So you really need to make sure, you know, you, you'll see this when you need to motivate your team under a deadline. If you just say redo the PowerPoint because I said so, that never works with your kids and believe you me, it doesn't work at the office, all right? Same thing. In, you know, if you're moving through your day and someone tries to cut the line at the grocery store, you know you're pissed. But if they turn to you and they say, do you mind if I cut the line because I'm late to pick up my kids at school? You're like, great, go ahead of me, yay. So it's just really making sure that that's given when you're, when you're talking to people. The third thing I want you to remember, and this is essentially the formula for making anybody do what you want them to do anytime, uh, comes from the Duncan Hines cake mix marketing theory. Have any of you bumped into this one? All right, when Duncan Hines first started making cake mix, the decision to have you at home add the egg was made in the marketing department. Because what they've discovered is when we add the egg, we're like, oh, I baked, right? I contributed to the success of the cake. And that's why they make you do it. There's no, we, ha there, we have the technology, right? There is powdered egg. But you know when you get the mixes without the egg, they feel weird. And this is why it's completely your brain, they know this. Okay, so now you're meeting with people, how do you take this out into the world? Whenever you're meeting with anybody, you need to find, okay, what's the egg? What are they gonna contribute to what you want so that your success becomes their success as well? And I'll tell you a story to make my point. Studies show that people remember stories longer, trust them more, and repeat them more accurately. So. I was working with an actress who was getting ready to go in for a big movie role. And I was like, you know, I said to her, why do you want to play this part? She said, do I love this part? And I feel like I was born to play this part. And I thought, oh, dear me. Um, and so the role was of a very, very strong female character. And so I said, okay, well, let's look at the resume of the gentleman you're meeting with. And it turned out that he had been the producer of Kramer versus Kramer and Fatal Attraction. Okay, these are huge female roles. These are iconic, game-changing female roles. So she was able to go into her meeting with him and say, I was so excited when I found out it was you because you were the person who created these iconic female characters. Blah, 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 blah. He was so happy. He felt so special. Right? That was his egg. That's what he was contributing to this particular project. So again, anytime you're going into a meeting, you're pitching an idea, if it's a job interview, anything, you're talking to your boss about a raise, you need to find their egg. Where does your success intersect with their success? One other thing to think about when you're beginning to you know, put together the words you're going to say is I want you to stay away from what's known in my business as useless modifiers. It's great. It's amazing. It's incredible. It's so cool. I don't know what you're talking about. right? We all saw this recently at the Oscars. Um, oh my god, the cast was amazing, and the crew was amazing, and the director was amazing, and I wanted to kill myself. right? If you, it's not amazing until you tell me why. So you have to have a very short story for anything you're going to be speaking about. Do you have a very tiny story about your product? Do you have a very tiny story about yourself? Um, you know, again, if, 
you're in a job interview and someone says to you, what's your greatest strength? And you're like, oh my, I'm an amazing leader. I'm just a really great leader. I just, I really love to lead. And I want to hang myself, right? So one time when I led a team, then this is what happened. Oh, that's memorable. Tell me about your product. Oh, it's just really, you see this all the time with morning TV. If someone hasn't been coached, you can always tell who's been coached on morning TV. Because they're the people who come on and they're able to say, I want you to use this product because this is what's going to happen to you when you do. Right? That's the egg. So just have that very small story. Uh, I, get, I give this example a lot, but I loved it. Uh, I was watching Good Morning America, and they had this guy who was on talking about the best new minivans. And he said, you know, this new minivan is so big, I can drive six kids to soccer practice, pick up lumber, and build a treehouse this afternoon. Like, I dig it. Like, I got how big the van was. Right? Doesn't need to be long, but it needs to be evocative. Mm -hmm.